Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to revisit the valuation of three major Canadian stocks in renewable energy sector, Algonquin Power, Trans Alta Renewables, and Northland Power. Almost one year ago, I analyzed the renewable energy sector in Canada and also these three stocks in detail and concluded that this sector is in a bubble and all these three companies are expensive and overvalued by 40 to 50%. I also compared TransAlta, Northland Power, and Algonquin Power stocks based on six different matrix of growth history, balance sheet, business margins, dividend, investment risks, and valuations, and concluded that Northland Power is definitely a better business compared to Algonquin Power and TransAlta Renewables based on these metrics. So let's revisit a short clip from that video. While it is a great business, I should mention that it doesn't mean you should buy Northland Power stock because as I mentioned in my detailed stock analysis video, the valuation is the most important factor. And I think Northland Power and all of these Canadian renewable co companies are extremely expensive and overvalued at this moment. So you pay a significant premium to own these companies at this share price and whether or not you should buy depends on your investment goals and also of course on your risk tolerance. After one year, I think it's a good idea to look at the past and see if I was right about the valuation and risks of investing in this sector at the time. I published my videos on renewable stocks around March 2022. And at the time, all these stocks were at top of their cycle or close to their top. Algonquin Power was trading for $18.70 per share. TransAlta Renewables was trading for $17.50 per share. And Northland Power was close to $40 per share. In the rising interest rate environment, the stocks with the worst balance sheet, most debt, variable loans, and also variable loans basically performed the worst, and those were Algonquin Power and TransAlta Renewables. These two stocks underperformed TSX index by a large margin in the last six months, in the last year, and even in the last five years. Algonquin Power recently had to cut their dividend by 40% and TransAlta management clearly mentioned there would be close to 0% growth in their business in 2023 due to the pressures from interest payments. Northland Power pretty much matched the performance of TSX in the same time period and showed that it has a better business fundamentals compared to Algonquin Power and TransAlta Renewables. But still, it didn't provide any significant return during this time compared to the market average, as I believe it was overvalued at the time. I guess the most important point here is that beside the risks and rewards, the valuation always matter the most. And if you overpay for buying a company for a stock, you always lose money at the end of the day. It's important that you buy the stocks when they are over, when they are undervalued, or at least when they are close to their fair intrinsic value. So now let's update my discounted cash flow model from the last year on these stocks with the new data that we have and see whether or not these, these stocks are still overvalued or if there is any, any opportunity to buy these companies at a fair value today. Let's first look at Algonquin Power Valuation. Stock price absolutely destroyed in the past year. It was $18.7 when I first analyzed the stock and it is now 9.7 Canadian dollar per share. They of course cut the dividend by 40%. The management of the company wants to sell up to $1 billion of renewable assets to pay down the debts, and they are going to acquire Kentucky Power in near future. I like the fact that the management of Algonquin Power is trying to fix their mistakes in the past, but I don't trust their judgment at all at this point. In terms of the valuation, I changed the model a little bit with the new adjusted EPS, which is lower than before. I reduced the short-term growth rate in a bear case and normal case, as I don't think Algonquin Power can grow their EPS by much in the next four years. In the bear case, they can grow their EPS by only 2% and normal case by only 7% in short to medium term. I also project a better growth in the future as they can eventually start to earn more money as they pay down the debt and interest rate environment will, will vary. So interest rates will decline over time. If I assign a 50% chance to the normal case, 25% chance to the bear case and 25% chance to the bull case, the fair value of AQN stock for the 10% return year over year should be around $8.65 per share, which means compared to the current share price of $9.7, AQN shares are traded for a 10% premium, but they are close to their fair value here. 
Last year, AQN was 50% overvalued. Today, they are pretty much close to their fair value. If the management of AQN make the right decisions and allocate capital efficiently in the next couple of quarters, and if the valuation still looks attractive, then I may even consider starting a position here. So the conclusion is that AQN valuation changed dramatically in the last year from an overvalued stock to an almost fairly valued stock. However, this is still a risky investment as I don't trust the judgment of the management team, at least for now. Now let's uh, look at TransAlta Renewables. Similar to AQN, stock price absolutely destroyed in the past year. It was $17.5 per share when I first analyzed the stock and it is now 12 dollars to Canadian dollar. They had similar issues with loans and interest rates, but they did not cut the dividend, at least for now. And the management of the company gave up the growth and the reinvestment in future years to keep the dividend payments in place, which is a decision that I don't like it at all. I think this is an awful decision to make current shareholders happy, but in the long run, it will ruin the business as there will be no, there will be minimum growth and minimum business leverage for the company. In terms of the valuation, I changed the model, model a little bit here with a new free cash flow. I reduced their short-term growth rate in bear and normal cases, as I don't think TransAlta can grow their, their cash flow by much in the next four years. In the bear case, they can grow their, their, their cash flow by only 1%, and in normal case, by only 4% in short to medium term. I also project a slower growth in the long term as, I don't, as they don't really reinvest cash flow in themselves at the moment and basically they pay all of their free cash flow to shareholders as dividend. If I assign 50% chance to the normal case, 25% chance to the bear case and 25% chance to the bull case, the fair value of TransAlta renewable stock for a 10% return year over year should be around $9.4 per share which means compared to the current share price of 12.2, TransAlta shares are traded for a 23% premium. Last year, TransAlta was 50% overvalued. Today, they are 23% overvalued. They are less overvalued, but I think this is, like, is still not a good buy here. I personally would not invest my money in this company. Finally, let's look at Northland Power stock. Share price of Northland Power dropped a bit from last year, but not much really. I personally like uh, Northland Power core business model better than Algonquin Power and TransAlta Renewables. In terms of the valuation, I changed the model a little bit for Northland Power with the new free cash flow. I reduced their short-term growth rate in the bear case and normal case. In bear case, they can grow their EPS by only 4% and in normal case by 7%. I also project a little bit slower growth in the long term due to a slower reinvestment of capital in this company. If I assign a 50% chance to normal case, a 25% chance to bear case, and 25% chance to bull case, the fair value of Northland Power stock for 10% return year over year should be around $26 per share, which means compared to the current share price of $36, Northland Power shares are traded for a 28% premium. Last year, Northland Power was 50% overvalued. Today, they are 28% overvalued. They are less overvalued, but I think this stock is still trades at a significant premium. There you are, guys. This was my update video on Canadian renewable energy stocks. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel to see similar videos in future. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Farewell.